Then. Right, a bit too much to go, so. That looks. It's a. There's special tools and processes. So you shouldn't be filming right now. It's a, okay, torque wrench. Sit on Newton meters, all you want. What did we say, 53? I think so. Fifty-one, two, three, fifty-three newton meters. That's uh, so what it says. So what it says. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pinch that one. Oh, it makes beep. a beep? I was waiting beep. for it to it click. Gives a beep and a vibration. Does it really? Yeah. So it's different than the click that we did before. Yes, this one is a little more accurate. Checking. Don't go too wild because you'll overstress it. But you can see by the digital, digital readout, it'll reach right around 53 plus and minus. Which means the torque is good. Yeah. Cool. Now we can put the other two pistons in. You can force them. So. You ready? So to install the pistons, we've taken the crank to the bottom, um, directly below the two pistons that we wish to install. It's the easiest way of doing it. Um, you can fiddle around having them up and sideways and whatever. Um, gravity being what it is, things like just to go downwards. So we put them right down the bottom. And we're going to turn the engine over. The other way, obviously. Just let it sit there, hand tight. Then we're going to give it a nip. Oh! Just so it doesn't fall over on us. Okay. This is like putting a round peg in a round hole. Only problem was, is that with the piston rings, the round peg is much larger than the round hole. So what we start off doing, we take the end cap off. 
because you want to take out the old bearings and put new ones in. Always put new bearings when you re-ring and rebuild. Quite easy to press the old bearing out, put it in the receptacle. Okay, new bearings. You should wipe out any residual. Wipe out, wipe off any residual oil, um, solvent, or other substance, whatever it is. Um, with a clean rag towel or whatever else you've got at hand. Okay, new bearing shells. These ones happen to be the same kind of bearing shell, top and bottom of the, uh, the bearing surface on these pistons. They only go in one way, they've got a little notch that goes in the little notch. Real simple. So you've cleaned any junk out of there. Do not touch the bearing surface. Okay, The oils and greases and acids that are on your fingers Show the groove a little bit better because it didn't have a chance to Bearing surface? No, the groove that you were oh, talking the about. groove? Yeah, where's that groove? And there's that groove. It's very small. Okay. It locates the bearing. And where was the thing on there? Right there. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Alright. So don't touch the surface of the bearing material. The oils and greases in your fingers will start to etch it. Um, that will cause a cavity, no matter how small, for stuff stuff to get into. Um, clean the finger. Apply a liberal coating of assembly lube, um, which is like a thick sticky oil. Those of you who are familiar with machining will actually know what I mean when I say whey oil. Um, it's very much like that. So, a liberal coating. Do not allow your finger to go down through the oil. Assembly oil is just that. It uh, stops wear before the oil pump can build up pressure and shoot engine oil to all these parts. Now, to protect the crankshaft, we have a couple of handy dandy pieces of rubber tube which we put over the studs. you got to go slower, you just make it all fuzzy, fuzzy in the picture. Put over the studs so that uh, we don't damage the crankshaft which is down the hole. Now, this one is piston number three. We have our little spot there that indicates front of engine. Okay, now we have a special tool with a piston ring compressor. And what we do, we slip that over the top and it compresses the piston rings down to the size of the piston. Okay, have a look down, make sure your crank is down the bottom. Can you see that? Hopefully. And gently ease this into position. Um, it should just slip into the hole quite easily without force until um, you hit the piston. We still going? Okay. Okay. Soft faced hammer. Now if you don't have a soft faced hammer, you can use a wooden handled hammer to use the handle. Okay. What you don't want to do is use a steel, brass or other metal hammer on the aluminium piston because it will damage it. Get your indicator lined up with the front of the, front of the engine okay. and tap the piston down. It should go pretty easy. Simple as that.
use the end of the hammer to gently seat it on the crankshaft. There you go. Simple as that.